Hello everybody, it's Delilah and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a little bit different than what you normally see on my channel, but today I'm gonna to be talking all about homeschool and what that looks like for us. I'm gonna go into our routine, our curriculum, the products that we use, the tools that we use, and how we use our space as both a normal functioning home as well as a classroom. This is something I really don't talk about very often on my channel and a big reason for that is because I am so new to the world of homeschool. I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing, uh, nor did I ever picture myself in this position. So I, I don't feel very qualified to speak on the topic, but I have gotten a lot of questions about how we do it, what it looks like for us. And as we are rounding up our first year of homeschool, I felt like maybe this would be a really good time to summarize what it looks like for us right now and some of the changes that we've made along the way uh, in order to make it function for our family. I'm not gonna get into the why behind our decision to homeschool. That's a whole other conversation for another video. Uh, but I will say this is a position I never imagined myself in, um, but God just kind of opened up the doors for us last year. So we dove in really not knowing what to expect or what we were doing. This year was very experimental for us, just kind of figuring out the ins and outs of homeschool and what it would look like for us and just kind of get used to the whole idea, the mindset, the lifestyle. Homeschool really is, is a lifestyle. It's not just something that you do for a couple hours a day. Learning takes place all day, every day, anywhere you are. And so it, it really is a lifestyle, taking all these different everyday moments and turning them into learning opportunities. Honestly, I did not think I was qualified, I was capable, I didn't, I, I doubted myself a lot. I did not think I was capable of doing this, but trust me, when I say if I can do it, you can do it. And I want that to be an encouragement to anyone who's on the fence about homeschooling or thinking about homeschooling. Um, <laughs> If I can do it, you can. And I wanna clarify here, I know a lot of people can be under the impression that when I speak about homeschool, uh, that I believe it's the best way or that it's the only way to properly educate our children and that's just simply not true. Homeschool is not for everyone. It's not for every child. It's not for every parent. Right now, this is what we feel is best for our family and I know there are a lot of other people who feel that way as well, but then there's a lot of people who feel completely opposite and I give so much credit to the teachers who have to teach like tons of students every single day. Like that is like kudos to you. That's hard work. So to give you an overall background, I am only teaching, officially teaching one child at the moment. My daughter is in kindergarten, almost finished kindergarten. I also have a three-year-old and a one-year-old. So next year my daughter will be in grade one and my son will be in preschool. Uh, we'll have a toddler and then a newborn baby as well. So it's going to be interesting, but I'm really excited to uh, to see what happens and uh, really excited to have this opportunity and to be able to do this. I think I'm going to start with our curriculum, kind of talking about what we've chosen for this year, pros and cons, what we like about it, what we don't, how it's worked for us. And then I'm going to get into uh, a little tour of our home and the areas where we have educational resources. And then at the end, I'm going to talk a little bit about our routine and what school looks like for us on a day to day basis. So first of all, my number one most asked question, what curriculum do we use? We use the Gather Round curriculum. This is a newer curriculum. It's not uh, one specific type, like it's not Charlotte Mason, it's not unschooling, it's not Montessori, it's not classical. It's kind of like an eclectic mix of all the different types of school mixed into one. Uh, what really drew me to Gather Round was the idea that everyone in the family is learning together and then they go off and do their independent work. Now they do have a like preschool and a kindergarten curriculum that is separate from that, which is what we've been doing. We skipped past the preschool stuff and we started right on kindergarten and it's been so good for our family. I feel like it's been the perfect fit for us this year. And then after that, from grades one to 12, the idea is you choose a unit study. There are many different unit studies to choose from. So you get to choose something that your kids are actually 
actually really interested in learning about. And then in that unit study, you cover pretty much all subjects except for math. So you do need to supplement math. You might also want to supplement some English as well. It's open and go. It's really easy. You have your like your discussion time, your learning time together as a family, and then the kids will go off and do their independent workbooks based off of their age and their skill level. Um, I love the concept of this. I love how simple it is and easy. I also love that they are based out of Canada and I love, love, love that they are a Christian based company. In each of their studies, they have incorporated scripture, like daily scripture reading. We're actually reading out of the Bible every single day. And then there's like a discussion point about it uh, to go into it a little bit more and to talk about it more and to open up a conversation about it. That is huge for us. We really wanted to choose something that was faith based. Now we've been doing the Burrows and Holes series, which is like the kindergarten series. There's four different books in this series. So there's like the Burrows and Holes and then Ponds and then Polar Regions. We're currently on the last one, which is about the savanna, and it's probably our most favorite one. Actually, I'll get I'll get it so I can show you. It comes with four teacher guides and then a student A and a student B book for each uh, unit, I guess. Right now we are doing on the savanna, and so each day there's like uh, a topic to talk about. We learn about ecosystems and uh, different plants and animals. It doesn't go super in depth to all this stuff because like it's kindergarten. So honestly, I feel like this is more just for fun. Uh, to keep them engaged and interested in what they're learning about. So you'll read the discussion part and then there's a few questions to ask them, you know, see if they were paying attention. And then there is a Bible connection portion every day. There are four like formal lessons in a week and then on Friday, uh, there's like an optional activity that you can do. There are some like review questions you can go over, a prayer break. And in the beginning of the week, there's also like life skills. This is kind of cool to help guide you through some of the life skills that your kids might you know, be ready to learn. Things like memorization and learning how to like empty the dishwasher and put dishes away and be involved in house chores. Um, but I really love the optional activities that they have. We don't always do them. Often on Fridays, the kids will go to the gammies and pop -ums and just have a day with them and then we'll, you know, catch up on work from for the week. But sometimes we'll add in some of these optional games. Um, and I find that when we play these games and we do these activities, it really solidifies a lot of the stuff that they've been learning throughout the week uh, and makes it a lot more realistic to them, makes it more fun. It takes them out of that, like just sitting and doing formal book work mindset to actually having fun learning, making a game out of it. Oh, for example, this is one of our favorites. It's called SWAT the Word. And so uh, we learn sight words each week and we have flashcards to go with it. So I'll take the flashcards up on the wall and then I'll give my daughter a fly swatter and I'll say a random word out loud and then she'll have to find it and swat it. Now I did order the physical copies, not the digital download, um, but they came in like a spiral binding except the student books had the binding on top. I actually just took that binding off, punched holes in them, and then slipped each of the units into binders. This just makes it really easy because I can take out one page at a time and I feel like she just gets a little bit less overwhelmed when she's only seeing one page at a time. And then of course, there's the extra pockets to store stuff and it just works really nicely this way. Now, in addition to the curriculum, we also went through Teach Your Child to Read in 100 Easy Lessons. This book was recommended by so many, like I think every single one of the homeschooling moms that I know and I talk to, they have used this book and they highly recommend it. Now, the way that they teach it is very different from the way that I remember learning reading. Um, but it makes a lot of sense and she totally grasped the concept of it So we started this in summer before we were officially doing any kind of homeschool. So she started with like sounds just really focusing on different sounds and then slowly she started building her way up to reading words uh, and then sentences and by the end she was reading stories like this. That's a really decently long story with some pretty big words. So in summertime, we were doing this almost every single day of the week. And then when we started doing official curriculum in school, we brought these lessons down to about two or three times a week because it was a lot of information she started taking in all at once. And so we went through this just really slowly. And it was really cool because a lot of what she was learning in this 
went hand in hand with what she was learning in her curriculum. Highly recommend this book. I actually have uh, a spot on my website where you can shop all of our stuff. I've linked a whole ton of stuff. In that section, there is a homeschool section. And so I have like the, her curriculum linked. I have this book linked. And a lot of the stuff that I'm gonna be talking about today is linked on that website. I will leave that link down below if you're ever wondering what we use or where something is from. Now for Theo, he's not doing any official sort of school. He's only three, almost four. He's gonna be four very soon. I'm not gonna make my three-year-old sit down and do formal book work unless he wants to. So when Eloise was his age, we actually bought this same set. This is the Rod and Staff set. It leans more on the classical side of learning. It's also a Christian-based uh, like preschool curriculum. This is the ABC series. We really loved it. She adored it. She absolutely absolutely loved these um, and it set her up really well to dive into kindergarten this year. My son started showing quite a bit of interest in wanting to learn and do some book work so I did buy a few of these books as well. He's currently on letter C which is counting with numbers and something I love about this book specifically is that they learn how to write numbers in this book and for each number there's a little rhyme that goes with it. So for example, number two says, around and back on a railroad track. Two, 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 so you can see. Around and back on a railroad track. I never make him do any of these pages. I only offer it, and if he doesn't wanna do it, I he'll go do something else. But a lot of what he learns at this age is just through play or um, life skills. But if you do have a child who's maybe preschool age, who's really interested in doing some stuff, I highly recommend these books. These have been really good for us. So that is our official curriculum we've been using this year. I will say we have loved the Gather Round series, the Burrows and Holes series. My only complaint is that I don't feel it goes in depth enough. I feel like my daughter could use a lot more practice and all the new topics that she's learning in order to really solidify everything. And then because next year she'll be in grade one, that's when we would start doing like the separate unit studies. I don't think we're going to continue Gather Round for next year. We might come back to it in a couple of years when like my daughter's in grade three and my son's in grade one and then we can learn together. But because my son's gonna be in pre-K and my daughter's gonna be in grade one, I'd be teaching two separate curriculums anyway. So we might just explore, see what else is out there. But overall, highly recommend it. It's been really good for us. Okay, so that is the curriculum we've chosen. Now I'm gonna take you along a little bit of a tour of our home and where we've set up educational resources um, and our homeschool supplies and what that looks like for us. So I'm gonna bring you over here. We're gonna start in this corner. This cabinet here houses a lot of my supplies. So inside we have like the printer and we've got paper and a cutter and some extra supplies um, in this bin. We've got like tape and a label maker and chalk and uh, glue and erasers and post-it notes and you know the little supplies that I will reach for or extra supplies. I also have a laminator in here as well and a hole puncher. So this is kind of off limits to the kids. This is my my area. Underneath there are a couple of drawers where we keep like some sensory things, some uh, like dry erase markers and cards, some beads. And then we also have some extra Play-Doh and kinetic sand and tools. And then up here, I actually thrifted pretty much all of this. So these little books are so cool. These are vintage I Can Read books that I found at the thrift store. You'd be surprised how much stuff you can actually find at the thrift store for homeschool. Uh, I found Bob books there before. I found like Art Abacus. I think this is actually antique. And here's another one. This one also has a clock and some addition and subtraction. Like, it's just it's so cute. There's so much you can actually find at a thrift store if you're just looking for it. And then in this basket, we have a lot of the flashcards. We've got like constant blend friends and word families and sight words. Um, and we reach for those when we play our games quite often. And then behind you, in this little nook is where we keep a lot of our educational toys. There's a lot of love every stuff in here. Um, and then we've also got things like our busy bus, um, a wooden like alphabet tracer, the Melissa and Doug like shape 
pictures. They love this one. I actually <laughs> really enjoy doing this one with them. And then for example, the Love Every Play Kits have things like finger puppets that they can line up and there's the numbers one through 10. They're all different colors, they're color coded. Basically, this is where I store toys uh, that I will pull out for the boys to entertain them, to keep their hands busy while I am more formally teaching my daughter. Um, just so that they have something to do, but they're also occupied and learning while they're playing. And then coming around to this wall, this is the newest addition to our homeschool setup. This is also their playroom, so I like to make the walls feel fun and interesting. And this kind of doubles as like an arts and crafts section as well, but then they can also play. Um, the options are endless. <laughs> but we got this little pegboard unit from Ikea. And on here we have mostly like crafting supplies. We have like paints and paint brushes. We've got window markers. We've got extra pieces in here for their perpetual calendar. We have Play-Doh tools and we have Play-Doh and then paper um, to just like roll it on the table for them to write on. I have that higher up so the youngest ones can't quite reach it yet, but it makes good use of this wall space. And then underneath it, I have their perpetual calendar and then weather board. I've got some chalk in here. You can kind of see I have their uh, play table slash sensory table from Ikea. This thing is well worth the purchase. So we do sensory activities here. We also do arts and crafts. And then on here, I like to put different um, fun educational things. The newest addition are these chalkboards that I also thrifted. Um, they love playing games on here or doing spelling tests on here. They just, they love coming here and drawing with chalk. In here I also have like some flashcards. These ones were illustrated and sent to us by someone who watches my channel, a subscriber. Like that's so cool. These are absolutely beautiful. You're gonna see later in this video, the day that we are filming the routine, I had just put this out and the kids were so into this. Eloise was lining up the alphabet cards. The boys are playing with these color and shape cards and matching up their toys with the different colors. Uh, these ones are from Pip and J Papery. I like to switch up the stuff, um, educational, items that are available to them and accessible to them every once in a while in the same way that I do a toy rotation. This keeps it fresh and fun and interesting without making it feel like official learning. It's just like a subtle invitation for them to come and to learn and explore completely on their own. Uh, so sometimes I'll put puzzles out here or an educational book that has lots of pictures and interesting things to look at. That's a really, really great way to get your kids excited about learning, especially little kids. Now I used to have a paper perpetual calendar that I got from Etsy for really cheap. We loved the concept of it, but it wasn't very functional for us. Um, so I did end up buying a wooden one. Uh, this was actually quite affordable and I adore this one. The kids love this one. I actually just got it from Amazon so I can link that one as well. But what's really cool is that these pieces are magnetic. So they just snap on very easily. You can snap out the month. There's some fun little pieces. So like, for example, if there is a special event coming up that month, you can put a special piece on that day to remind them, hey, something fun is happening. And then there's a slider to indicate the day of the week. This round piece will go on whatever day it is. So currently it is the 18th of April. Having a visual like this has been really good to help my kids grasp the concept of like days of the week and what happens on days of the week and what our routine is like. Um, like there are certain things that happen on Mondays and Tuesdays and Thursdays and Fridays and then they kind of know what to expect and that's really good for them. And then this weather board actually came in one of our Love Every kits. We absolutely adore Love Every so much. Their play kits are so good. This goes through what the weather is like, uh, the temperature, weekday, weekend, day of the week and seasons. All the kids get involved in this. They love it. It really helps them like grasp and understand weather uh, and how weather affects our day to day. Now moving on to the next wall. On this wall we have our Bible memorization cards. We got these also from Pip and J Papery and we have loved them so much. This is 
how we start our day uh, with some Bible memorization, and we've done one verse a week. So the concept is there is a different verse for each letter of the alphabet. So each week I would add a new flashcard to the wall and we would learn a new memory verse. We do actions for these, we make it fun and exciting, we do silly voices. And I tell you, their memorization is insane. I cannot believe how quickly and easily they have memorized these verses and remember them long term. Right now we're doing some review because we've obviously gone through the whole alphabet. I can just say, what's verse P? and they know it. Or what's verse F, and they know it. And then down here, again, I like to display educational things on their wall. So right now I have a gather mat with American Sign Language on it. We haven't formally looked at it or practiced or learned any of it yet, but honestly, even I really want to learn this. So that's up there right now. These are things that I will switch out every once in a while so they have something new to look at. I also have a mat like this with the numbers one to 100, also from Gather, up on the wall across from the toilet so that when they are sitting on the toilet doing their business, they have something to look at. And then we have one more section over here. On this wall, I have displayed a couple of posters. Again, these are from Pip and Jay. The color wheel and then shapes and colors as well. And they love this. They love quizzing me on it. They love it when I quiz them on it. They quiz William on it. And then underneath there are some bookshelves. Usually library books are on here, like right now. Sometimes I'll switch those out with different uh, books for the holidays, like Christmas or Easter. Um, or other educational books as well. Again, this is something I switch out on a regular basis to keep it fun and interesting. So that's all for the playroom. Moving on to the kitchen. Most of our formal learning takes place here in the dining room. So we have moved this chalkboard around the entire house. It's ended up here. I think this is a solid place for it because I love being able to visually demonstrate or show to Eloise what I'm saying or trying to teach her. It helps me explain things better and helps her understand things better too. And it's cute, like, it's cute. We also have some birthday decorations up here for someone's birthday coming up soon, but um, this is just the perfect spot for this chalkboard. It's like all my childhood dreams coming to life. I remember my grandparents had like this giant chalkboard in their house and lots and lots of encyclopedia type books. I would go to these bookshelves pick out books and just like pretend to be a teacher. And I would do that for hours and hours. I would play teacher and I, <laughs> I loved it. And so I feel like this is kind of like my childhood coming to life. And lastly, the last place that we have uh, school stuff stored is here in this cabinet in the kitchen. Uh, again, a lot of our formal learning happens right here. And so it just made the most sense to have school stuff stored right here. So this is where we store most of the formal learning as well as some arts and craft supplies. I love that this is down on the kids level so that they can come in here and grab their art supplies whenever they need. So there's a number of art supplies in the back on this bottom shelf and then in this bin we have like all of their markers and pencil crayons, there's pens, sharpener, um, scissors, tape, glue, all of the, the things we need on a daily basis. This is where we store the workbooks we are currently going through. We also have the Jesus Storybook Bible. We've been doing some read-alouds as well. They've been really enjoying the Boxcard Children series, so we're on book four right now. We've also read Charlotte's Web, and I think there was another one that we've done so far. But I love doing read-alouds just to get them excited about literature and reading. And I haven't done it yet, but I am going to be signing up for Audible. Like, there have been a number of times this winter that I have lost my voice and I haven't been able to read. That way they can still get some read aloud time, uh, even if I don't have a voice. Or sometimes I honestly just need a break and so I can just turn on an audiobook for them. They can do their schoolwork, they can color, they can play with Lego or play quietly doing whatever they want to do. Um, and listen to stories or even in the vehicle. In here I also keep the things we reach for on a pretty daily basis. We've got like place value shapes, um, the flashcards we are currently using, and then a bag of coins. We've also got some Bob books that we've been going through alongside her curriculum. Now that we're done the Teacher Child's Read in 100 Easy Lessons, we are basically just practicing reading here and there. So Bob books are really good for that. We've got like some beginning readers, some advancing readers. I also thrifted a few preschool ones for, or like pre-reader ones for Theo. And then back here, there are a number of um, mesh 
magazine holder. So we've got like a bunch of extra coloring books. We've got paper. I have another one for scrap paper, like construction paper. We've got curriculum we've already gone through and then some curriculum we have yet to go through in here as well. Now about our routine. When I say routine, I say it very loosely. Uh, no two days look exactly the same. We're not on a strict routine or a strict schedule where we do the same thing every day at the same time. That's something I really enjoy about homeschool. We can make it work whenever we have the time. A lot of the times we will do it in the morning, but a lot of the times the morning is when we will go and run errands or grab groceries or visit friends. Uh, and in those cases, we will do school in the afternoon instead while my youngest is napping. But usually we will do school in the morning uh, and it typically starts around eight o'clock at the breakfast table. One of the hardest parts I found with just teaching young, young children or having young children in the house was getting them to sit still and listen and pay attention. Their attention spans aren't very long and they're very busy doing stuff. So to sit down and read the discussion part of the school day was, was a challenge. <laughs> I love this because their hands are occupied and they're sitting in one place for at least a short period of time. Uh, and then everyone is there and we can all discuss it together as a family. We can read from the Bible together as a family and learn together as a family. And it's really, really cool. I love that part of our day. After that part of the school day is done, breakfast is finished, the kids will go off, get themselves ready for the day. Zach and I will usually do some teamwork and get the kitchen tidied up. Since we don't have like a formal learning room or school room, we do a lot of our formal learning right here at the dining table and it's imperative that we keep our kitchen and dining area tidy. So after every single meal, we make sure that the kitchen gets cleaned up pretty thoroughly. While we finish up cleaning, the kids will wander into the playroom and usually play for a little while. They'll read some books. They'll get into some of that educational stuff that I put out for them. And I'll just kind of take it easy. We don't like to rush our mornings. That just makes things stressful. So even on the days when we're running a little bit behind, I don't worry about it too much because I know we've got the whole day ahead of us, but we can just squeeze in that learning time whenever we need to. Typically between nine and 10 is when we officially start the school day. I'll gather all the children together and we'll start with memory verses. So we'll start in the playroom. We'll go over the memory verse for the week. Um, and then we'll move on to the calendar and the weather board and all of this, all of the kids are involved in and we're engaging in it together. Then we'll move into the living room and we'll start watching some YouTube videos. Um, this is something that I started implementing about halfway through the school year because I realized there's a lot of great like educational songs on YouTube and music and song is such a great memorization tool that makes it really fun and it gets stuck in your head. I remember, I think it was like grade four. We were learning our multiplication and our times tables and we would sit down as a class and listen to these songs. There was a song, a skip counting song for each number and those songs stuck with us. So I wanted to start doing that with my kids as well. We've done days of the week, months of the year, skip counting, really whatever we're learning at the time is what we'll watch. So we'll watch a few videos while they are busy dancing and singing away, having fun watching those videos. I will get the formal school stuff set up for the day. So Eloise does her book work. She usually has about four pages that she does. I'll get her first page set up for her. And then for the boys, I'll grab a toy or a puzzle or Play-Doh or kinetic sand, something that they can do while she does her book work. I find they really enjoy just being present, being in the area. And I actually love this because it's amazing how much I've noticed my three-year-old picking up on different ideas and concepts and things that we've been learning. Like I said earlier, homeschool I feel is more of a lifestyle than just something you do a couple hours a day. So having this whole routine and this lifestyle happening now will really help set up my youngest children for when they're ready to start doing preschool and kindergarten and grade one. A lot of the stuff that they're gonna be learning, they'll already be kind of familiar with because they were present when they heard their older sister learning all this stuff. So I'll get something set up for each child as well as a snack either like fruit or like a rice pudding or something for them to nibble on they're usually asking for a snack at this point of the day so um, 
That way they know to expect a snack and they're not constantly asking for one. So then we'll just spend the next half an hour to an hour, sometimes one and a half hours going over book work and school work and teaching. Uh, sometimes we'll pause and watch some videos about the topic that we've learned or the animal that we've learned about. Sometimes we'll take a break and go play outside for a little while or we'll do a puzzle, especially on days when I'm everyone's kind of having a hard time paying attention. Those are days that we'll take more frequent breaks and do other stuff just in between. So usually our school day ends around 11 o'clock and then we have the rest of the day to do whatever we want to do. In these younger years, school doesn't take very long, but it is very hands-on. So when I'm with them, I'm not picking up the camera, I'm not on my phone, I'm very present with them, and uh, I like to let them know that they have my full attention during that time. Sometimes we will extend our school activities and we'll go on a nature walk when it's nicer outside. Uh, or we will do crafts or a sensory activity. Sometimes we'll all just sit and read a read aloud book while they color or craft. And that's typically how a school day goes. If we are out in the morning, we'll do the same like rhythm uh, later on in the afternoon. Sometimes we won't do the memorization and calendar part of it and we'll just dive right into school books. Uh, but typically I do like to get them started <laughs> Hello with something a little bit um, more fun and hands-on and engaging so we can work on together Before we get into school books and in a nutshell that is what school looks like for us right now um, It has changed a lot throughout the last year. There are a lot of different ideas and things that I've implemented and then removed and adjusted in our school days according to what worked and what didn't work. Like I said, this year was a lot about experimentation and trial and error and figuring out what worked for us. And our routine is going to change over and over and over again as my kids get older, as we add more children to our family. I mean, next year with a newborn and a toddler and two kids doing school, like it's, it's gonna be a lot and our routine is probably gonna look very different. But this is where we have landed on right now as we are coming to a close on our first year of school and this is what has really, really worked for us. And then throughout the day, there's always more opportunities for learning moments, uh, life skills, memorization. Why are you copying me? <laughs> We'll sit down and read books together. Sometimes I'll get Eloise to read books to me. Um, I'll write notes to her. She'll write notes to me. I mean, learning happens even when we're out and about. Eloise will practice reading signs or clocks or menus or even like counting the vehicles that she sees or counting how long it takes Zach to run in and get the mail. <laughs> like, uh, learning happens all the time, not just in- Mommy, thank you for cleaning up my you're welcome. Not just in our formal schooling hours. Anyway, I am going to bring this video to a close now. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you found this useful. Let me know if you want more videos on this topic. Again, I'm so new <laughs> to all of this, but I'm always learning and uh, there's always things that I can talk about and share about. And this is obviously a topic I really enjoy talking about. So yeah, give this video a thumbs up if you wanna see more homeschooling content on this channel. And uh, thank you all for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.